gosh, that's an om- ominous sound of recording in progress. Um, uh, fantastic. Uh, th- let's give it a, a few minutes uh, for uh, people to join um as with you know most online events uh you know the first couple of minutes uh people making their connections i i'm, I'm going to start by obviously um saying welcome welcome all to map camp um <laughs> Uh, oh, I, I, ooh, I see we've got several. I'm so excited by this. Uh, this has been, um, uh, for those of you who, who don't know, Map Camp is probably the, uh, well, it's, it is a very accidental conference. Uh, this started actually with me saying, uh, I'm going to a pub. Um, who wants to meet up to do some mapping? And um, about, I just tweeted this actually, and about 40, 50, maybe 60 people responded, uh, yes. And I was like, oh, that's too big for a pub. And then a friend of mine had a, a, an empty shop front uh, and said, oh, you could use that. But by the time we got that, we were up to about 80, 90 people. And then a friend of mine said, oh, they had a church. And by that time we were up to a hundred. And it was like, oh, oh no, what are we doing? And, 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 then Jane got involved, and um, and before you knew it, we had a conference. So this 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 started as a complete accident. I still haven't got to the pub. I still haven't got my beer or anything along those lines. I mean, but uh, so we're seven years in, uh, and uh, into this accidental conference. So first of all, hopefully by now we've got people joining. So I'm just going to say um, a welcome to Map Camp. Uh, we've got a, several people with us here today. Uh, we've got uh, various of the hosts, uh, the chairs of the conference. Uh, so we've got Jen and Damien. Um, uh, Cat Sweet, all, well, obviously, it's very, very early in the morning in the US. So, um, uh, and there are some brave souls. I know I've been talking to one in the in the chat rooms from New York who've, uh, who've joined us as well. And we've got Steve, who's also a chair. And then we've got our organisers. I can see there's Steve Hudson, uh, um, and Jane, I can't, I can't see um, uh, Jane on the screen. Jane, Jane may be uh, Jane, who has all the power, uh, uh, may, maybe somewhere. Um, and so uh, we've also got several sponsors. Um, uh, Map Camp wouldn't happen uh, without its sponsors. So hugely grateful uh, to AWS, uh, who've sponsored this for several years. So big thank you to them. For enabling map camp to happen uh enterprise architecture solutions as well and, and pip decks have come in and uh sponsored us uh, as well um so i better better start by um asking a few questions actually uh i'm gonna um dive over actually i'm gonna bring in steve because um uh, Steve Hudson, that is. Because Steve, you're, you're, you've also, uh, with MapCamp, we sponsor some uh, charities as well. Uh, Parkinson's Cancer Research. Do you, do you want to talk about that at all, just for a moment? Yeah, sure. No problems at all. So um, I've been delighted to be a part of all this because my goal is to, you know, do good as what mapping does for everybody else, which I'm super excited about. So for us, we're doing good for Parkinson's UK and for cancer research. So Dear Jane is still uh, doing everything in the background because we're very popular and everybody is still joining. So we are making more contributions to our charities right now, which is super exciting. So thank you very much to all of you who have done that and doing that right now. We really, really appreciate it. And on a personal level, my mother actually has Parkinson's and dementia. So you're making a personal difference to me as well. So uh, I can't thank you all enough for that. So this is a great forum for doing good in all sorts of forms from the way we all do mapping and the the great crew here. We're going to show you all about what we're going to do for the future, but also how you're making a massive contribution to these two charities as well. So with Parkinson's UK, you're helping us to achieve new ways of getting new results because there is no cure for Parkinson's at all. So, but with your donations, you're making that journey happen for all of us. So for the future generations, we are gonna make a difference there. And Cancer Research, fantastic again. We're doing so much work there for them as well. And it's not just about sort of getting the cures out there, but it's the awareness and making sure everybody's super happy for the future so we can look after everybody. And that's what I really believe in mapping and what we do. Because we, for me, as been a junior mapper for seven years <laughs> and I'm still learning it's a case of I see this it really makes a huge difference 
not only to the methodologies, the technologies, the digital tech, but to people's lives too. And that's what I'm all about. And that's why I'm honored to be a part of all this. So thank you. <laughs> I'm really pleased to be here. And it's fantastic. And I've had my coffee this morning. So it's <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I, I've got to say it's lovely. We we've known each other, gosh, for many, many, many years. I, I'm I'm so so happy that you're you're involved with Matt Cap as well. I mean, you're a dear friend, and um, uh, and and this is uh, something which is uh, very personal to me. And I love, you know, we've always. With Matt Camp, try to do those things in terms of offsetting carbon, all these sorts of things. I, I love the the charitable focus as well. Um, uh, that you know, you've helped drive this for us as well. So, um, uh, heart and soul, thank you so much, Steve. It's um, it, it's uh, uh, um, it's a delight. It's a pleasure, and and that's one of the things I like about um, mapping is that I think there's a great community out there, of people who really care and really try and help others as well. Now, we've got a number of our um, uh, chairs here as well. Um, so um, I, I thought we'd do a quick round table sort of introduction. I'm going to start off with uh, Jen. Uh, and Jen, uh, you're running the theme of um, oh, triads today, are you not? Uh, do you want to give us a couple of minutes, uh, introduce, uh, and maybe tell us a little bit about what you're looking forward to for today? Sure. Uh, thanks, Simon. Uh, so I'm Jen Ashley, and I've been co-chairing this uh, conference since 2017, I believe. I ha always have to double check every year, but I believe it started in 2017. Um, and it was at the church, I believe, Simon, right, when we did the first one. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, as usual, we've got a great lineup of uh, speakers uh, who's going to be talking about mapping but uh, in covering a lot of uh, different topics. Uh, so in my track, for example, there are uh, talks about um, who needs to be sent to space or, so, or something like that. Um, so that, that, that one is quite interesting to me, um, as well as the others, of course. It's interesting to me because I just had a NASA hackathon as well. Uh, so I'm really curious as to what uh, our speakers will be talking about there. Uh, there are also uh, talks about you know, how uh, financial systems can support humanity, uh, how uh, poverty, for example, uh, helps with sustainability. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, how, or, or uh, affects uh, you know, sustainability. And uh, yeah, there are a host of other topics uh, today that people should be looking forward to. So uh, if you want to check out you know, my track, uh, it's a triad track. And I'm going to hand it over back to Simon. <laughs> pleasure, <laughs> pleasure. And, and Jen, you, you've been with us from the very, very beginning uh, uh, of Matt Camp as well, <laughs> and, uh, and chairing. Uh, I've got to say thank you so much. Uh, well, I'm for God, that, that sounds like it's a fine. Uh, we're, we're hoping to do it next year as well, and, and obviously going forward, but um, it's been fantastic. Um, so, uh, delight to have you here again as well. Um, so, I will now jump over to another one of our chairs, um, who again is an old friend. Um, I used to work with actually, there, there's two of the co chairs I used to work with, uh, but, but one was at a company called Canonical, provide something called uh, Ubuntu. Uh, and and that is uh, Damien. Damien, hello, sir. Good morning, um, and thank you. Gosh, I cannot believe we're here again. It's it's just a year we were here. Um, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Super excited to be as part of this again. I've seen some of the planning. I've seen some of the just um, great thought that some of our speakers have put into and um, what they're showing us today really excited at the international flavor i've got um somebody who's going to be dialing in from australia um so just this sort of energy it's, it's a really interesting talk because it's very localized it's about wool um I'll, I'll, I'll say that much um i've got somebody dialing in from india uh we we're talking just last night and yeah i'm just really looking forward to i suppose the diversity of talks um i've got people talking about the nba i've got people talking about sparking a revolution in india in farming i've got a friend in amanda brock who's going to be talking i've never seen i'll actually have a chance to see her talk because i'll have a little break when i won't be um when i when i won't be chairing so really really just excited to see old friends also excited to hear 
themes. Um, we always have themes developing from the questions. So whatever we throw out as speakers, as a community, we always find that there's one or two things that tell us something about what's happening out there. So I'm keen to see what emerges from that. Um, very excited. How much of that is coffee based? We'll see over the course of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was excited last I wasn't really so, uh, so, so really key. thanks Simon Oh, absolute pleasure. And, and we threw you the theme of uh, uh, weird as well, the weird world of mapping. So we, we've gone for, you know, uh, we said to Jen, we're, we're going to have triads of speakers. I, I think we threw you the theme of that. Yeah, I've the, the pleasure the of weird. holding that. There's the NBA one. There's a, yeah, a couple of really interesting ones in there. So I don't want to just plug my talks. Obviously, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot happening elsewhere. But please come and see that if you if you get a chance. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, another person I work with and right at the very beginning, actually, uh, for when mapping started, uh, when I was running a, a company called For Tango. Uh, 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 we've got Steve and, and Steve, we've thrown you a, the, the government track. Do you want to um, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit more about what's happening there? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Simon. Yeah. So, as you said, we've we've uh, been doing this for over a decade now i would say and yeah um the government track well i was part of your government research group a couple of years ago um and we explored so many different topics and and through through doing that um so i've uh, i've never worked a huge amount in government in the past um and through doing that i've kind of realized the the impact that uh, the government has across um across society across societies right so we've got a great lineup of speakers um today uh, that are going from everything from organizational design within government to to looking at uh, the the impacts of mental health issues uh to yeah to, to loads of different things like health outcomes and and um and and looking at uh, the department of no that uh, one's going to be a really interesting one so yeah so there's a really really good lineup i'm really excited to, to to see this and um likewise like damien said you know we've got people joining from all over the world so um as far as you know india uh, india sorry indonesia uh, and um, back over to the to, to the us so um yeah it's going to be a great day i'm really excited well, so it's an absolute me. delight and pleasure to have you here as well. Now, we've also got Kat, Kat Sweetle. Um, Kat's going to be doing uh, Cat's Capable Mappers, um, uh, where a group of mappers are going to come together and, and tackle a big issue or attempt to tackle a big issue, big issue by doing some live mapping. Now, of course, it's very early in the morning in the US, so I, I assume that uh, Kat's asleep at the moment. Uh, um, so we will see see Kat a bit later on in the day and then Kat will also be joining us for a fireside chat week because we end the day uh, with a fireside chat with myself um, we've got Kat Sweetle uh, we've got Dave Snowden and we've got Rachel as well so um, and, and we'll be uh, going through and discussing uh, all the uh, uh, well the things that themes that we picked up uh, during the day that's very unscripted um, somewhat chaotic uh, hopefully <laughs> a lot of fun now a couple of things obviously uh do remember code of conduct so in your comments and tweets be mindful of others be be be, be respectful you know think and care about others those are really important parts of uh, uh mapping as well um so so um please please do read the code of conduct and i suppose before um uh we we get into the sessions I've got a, I've got a little bit of a presentation, but I, I'm I'm also one of these sort of terrors for I I like to go through, you know, what we've actually built just to show everybody the website just in case you haven't had a play. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all share my screen, and do shout out at me and and tell me uh, if if uh, things are are working or not. So. Yeah, I'm just going to share my screen. I'm going to do a, a talk on map camp awareness. Uh, but before we do, I just want to take you to my view of the web. Uh, you can see I'm having lots of chats with people. Um, so let's go back to the lobby. Hopefully uh, you've all found, well, you're in the auditorium, so you found the VFairs um, uh, uh, site. Obviously, on the left hand here, we've got the agenda. So if you click on that, you can see the agenda for the day. Uh, I won't go into the auditorium because I, I, I'm fearful I'm set up some infinite 
uh, uh, infinite sort of loop, you know, me being there and being me in the picture of me being there and, you know, crash th uh, the universe or something. Um, uh, on the, um, over here, we've got our thanks to our sponsors um, who, who, who made uh, the, the conference possible. Now, down here, hopefully you can see where my cursor, can you see my cursor? Yes. Oh, yep. fantastic. So uh, here we've got things like there's a wonderful tool. Uh, 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 it's all uh, I love the tools the community has created um, uh, online Wardley maps as well. Um, so it's a wonderful tool for mapping. I'm sure you're going to uh, see this uh, 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 um, points during the day that, that was built by Demonsk and so uh, there's a link to that. We've also got Learn Wardley Mapping. For those of you completely new, uh, Ben Marsures um, does a wonderful job of teaching people uh, actually how to map. Um, here are the charities that we're supporting. We've mentioned those, Parkinson's Cancer Research, uh, Superstars, that's Steve's company, uh, and uh, Steve Hudson, uh, and Steve, um, well, he's a, he's the the financier the the one who sort of brings this all together yes uh, so uh thank you steve um because otherwise this would would not happen so very much appreciated and uh, there's a welcome video uh which has jane introducing you all into to map camp so if you haven't seen that uh please do there is the code of conduct so map camp should be a safe environment for all. We will do everything we can to make sure it is. So please, 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 uh, you know, think about what you're saying. Think about how others feel about this. Have respect uh, for others as well. Um, be a decent human being. And uh, we've also got a lounge. So in the lounge, there are uh, a couple of different areas for, for, for um, chatting. Um, uh, there's the sort of general uh, uh, government one at the bottom just here, which I've been on talking to lots of people today, um, uh, Tobias and Julius and others. We've been we started chatting a little bit earlier on this morning when I when I finally worked out how to join. So I'm now going to take you through Map Camp Awareness 2022. God, I can't believe it's so many years since we we've been doing this can i double check you can all see my screen okay just a thumbs up or something good thank you all right so i'm going to talk about the issue of strategy then i'm going to get into maps then i'm going to talk about um uh, the, some of the research that i've been doing recently and then we're going to just oh uh, we've had enough assignment then we'll, we'll get into to map camp itself so um, for those of you who don't know, a little bit of background, uh, this, this whole thing started for me mapping uh, when I worked at this company uh, for Tango. Uh, it was an online photo service, a uh, number of different lines of business, uh, doing very well, uh, very profitable, had a problem. Uh, the, the CEO uh, was completely clueless, uh, making it up as they went along. I mean, they had no idea. I, I think Steve can can confirm. Steve, can you confirm the CEO was pretty clueless? Well, Steve. I think the CEO got a clue. Oh, OK. Well, thank you. Well, I, I can definitely confirm the CEO was clueless because I was the CEO. Um, so um, I, I had no idea. Um, I, I, you know, when it came to things like strategy, it was more like uh, me looking at a crystal ball reading all those articles about important things like SOA, mashups, WebOS, aggregation technology, participation architectures, AJAX, REST, always all these just like, just a, um, a horrendous, you, you see it today, it's like AI, uh, blockchain, you know, we've got to have a bit of AI with everything, you've got to blockchain everything, it's all, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's so exactly the same, uh, but we're just slightly different words, that's all. And, and so strategy was just sort of like randomly, oh yeah, we better we better do some of this mashup stuff. Uh, probably people don't even remember what a mashup is now. Um, but um, um, so um, I, I I ended up um, in a, a bookshop in uh, Charing Cross because um, I was reading every book I could find on strategy because I thought there must be something better than this. And uh, the bookseller said, have, have you ever read Sun Tzu's The Art of War? And the answer was no. And so she persuaded me to buy two different copies because they're all translations. And um, 
I'm so grateful because it was in the reading of the second one, I noticed a particular pattern. So Sun Tzu talked about five factors that matter in competition. Uh, have a purpose, a moral imperative. Uh, second, understand your landscape, the environment you're competing in. Uh, then understand the climactic patterns. Uh, so that's like the heavens, the weather, uh, how the, the landscape is changing. Then you get into doctrine, principles of organization. And finally, you're into leadership and gameplay. I thought, God, this makes so much sense. Um, but it was really fortunate. Because at the same time, I also read about John Boyd, uh, the mad major. Uh, and John Boyd, uh, US Air Force pilot, talked about five, well, sorry, he talked about a number of factors, uh, is it four, I should say, not five, uh, that mattered in com competition. Uh, the, it was called the OODA loop. And so the first O of the OODA loop is to observe the environment. And that's what landscape and climatic patterns are about. So observing the space you're in. Then you need to orientate yourself around it. That's what these principles are about. And then you need to decide what you're going to do. And then you act. And that's what leadership is. And of course, that, that changes the game, the space you're in. Um, so you know, we, they call it a loop. And so this fitted with this whole Sun Tzu. And I was like, OK, uh, that makes a lot of sense. But people would tell me, but it's all about the why. And there's two whys here. There's the why of purpose, what I am trying to achieve, and the why of movement. So, um, uh, so why of purpose might be to win the game, or maybe not. Maybe it's to lose the game. I don't know. Uh, the why of movement is why do I make this choice over that? And at the heart of this was this idea of landscape. Because you learn all these different patterns based upon observing the landscape around you. And that's what got me into this idea of maps. And so I went back to my organization and I asked everybody to bring me all the maps you've got because I was quite excited by this. And so I, I, people brought me all sorts of maps, uh, mind maps, business process maps, uh, systems maps. So this is a systems map for an online photo service, uh, somewhat simplified. And I took one component here, uh, customer relationship management, and I moved it across the map and I asked, how has the map changed? And the answer is, it hasn't, it's the same. But if I look at a geographic map and I take Australia and move it, say, next to the UK, I know that map has changed. So why hasn't this map changed? Well, it's not a map, it's a graph. So what I quickly discovered is everything we had in business that we called a map was in fact not a map. It was they were they were simply graphs. So to explain the difference, um, the three images at the top are all identical graphs. So they're three different nodes uh, connected by two different links. Uh, in this case, Nottingham, London, Dover, and the links being roads. Uh, they're approximations. All maps are imperfect approximations, and, and the same with graphs. Um, so, but the three images at the top are all identical graphs. The three images at the bottom are all completely different maps. And so the difference between a map and a graph is that in a map, space has meaning. So you can't just simply take Australia and shift it next to the UK and think it's going to be the same. Of course, it fundamentally changes uh, because you're trying to observe you know, a landscape that's underneath this. So I started thinking, OK, right, I need to create a map of business. Uh, what are the three characteristics? Well, I didn't know there was three, but what are the characteristics that you need? And what you need is an anchor, such as Magnetic North. You need position of pieces uh, relative to each other. So this is north or south or east or west of that piece. And you need an idea known as consistency of movement. So if I'm going north, I'm going north. If I'm going south, I'm going south. I'm not going east or something. And if I've got those, then that describes space. And now I've got a map. So I started off mapping my own business, but I always use the tea shop example because I quite like it. Um, so I need an anchor. So um, you start with the users. That can be consumers, customers, stakeholders. It could be the public, business. It could be government. You've got to start somewhere. So those are our anchors. And for a tea shop, I've just put two down, public, who hopefully want to drink cups of tea, and the business that wants to sell cups of tea. OK, now a cup of tea has needs. It needs tea, it needs a cup, it needs hot water, 
hot water needs cold water needs kettle and a kettle needs power so what i've now got are the anchors at the top and a chain of needs and the further i go down the chain the less visible things become so if i'm a, a member of the public drink a cup of tea i'm often not thinking about the power that you used in the kettle to make the hot water to make the cup of tea i mean it's it was there but it's quite far removed and it's it's almost quite distant so that's a, almost a metaphor for position. So now I've got anchor and position. I'm missing a movement, though. And it turns out all of these things are um, uh, basically uh, forms of capital, all of the nodes. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about practices, activities, data, or knowledge, even, even ethical values. So what I can do is go, right, how evolved are these components? Um, so um, by simply putting, you know, power, I think it's a commodity, kettle, for some reason I've put in custom built. Now, what I've now got is anchor position and movement. So the anchor is the business public, the, the position described through the chain, uh, movement described by how evolved these components are. And I'm now actually exposing my assumptions around a tea business in a way that others can look and, and challenge. They can say, uh, I think there's something wrong with a map. I don't think your kettle really should be custom built. Now, normally um, we actually put some axes around this. So we, we put a dotted line for, we don't put the compass. We do the dotted line for value chain and often, often a line at the bottom uh, for evolution. And that's just to make it easier for people to read, give them a bit of comfort, but um, uh, I mean, you don't need those. Uh, you could just have the compass instead because fundamentally it's a map describing a space. So give you an example, uh, example of use because all that talk, well, why does it matter? Uh, this is an insurance company. This was 2011. This is uh, a process flow they had. Uh, they needed compute. They would order server. Server goes into goods in. They would modify mount and racket. They had a bottleneck with modification of the servers. Uh, and so they came up with a plan to invest um, many millions into robotics. Uh, they spent about six months working on this, uh, came up with various business cases, looked at various vendors, um, then developed their business case, wonderful return on investment calculations, all about to go. And they asked me to have a look. And the problem is they've built this story. And, and a lot of organizations, we run on narratives and stories. and we also have an entire industry which tells everybody to be a, a great leader you've got to be a great storyteller which means if i go in and ch start challenging the story i'm actually saying you're not great leaders so they're not going to be friends of mine uh, and it's not going to work very well so i said well can we just map it and they're like oh not sure about that and um, they spent 15 minutes and they put the map together here it is a uh, user needs compute um, compute order server, server, um, you know, uh, needs goods in, and then got this modify mount rack. And I've added the process flow on here as well, which is what they were trying to optimize. And so you've got this map, and I can now ask questions without, you know, challenging them. Why have you got server and commodity? Well, it's a commodity. Why have you got compute and product? But somebody in the room just simply, you know, looking at the map, uh, well, I prompted it. Um, it's why have you got racking custom built? And the answer was they had custom built racks. Um, they had a company that made their racks. So what are the modifications you're making to service? Well, they don't fit out racks, racks. So we have to take cases off, drill new holes, add new plates in order to get them to fit our, our racks. And that's why you need robotics, yes. And somebody just simply in the room went, why are we using standard racks? Now, these people weren't daft. Um, these people were simply trapped by context. So at some point in the past, it made sense to use custom-built racks because there were no standard racks. Uh, but they've been continuing this on. And this is probably one of the most common problems that I see is uh, people custom-building stuff, which became a commodity long ago. By simply putting it in a map, you just go, well, what we should be managing, actually, is, is, is we should racks should be more of a commodity we shouldn't be doing the modification. Uh, we shouldn't be investing millions into robotics. It's just not needed. Now, this sort of stuff, um, I'm delighted uh, a very good friend of mine, Liam Maxwell's here, 
uh, speaking today as well is the sort of stuff we started to do in government and uh, just one project alone by mapping it out they saved uh, about 425 million i mean often this can be huge sums of money and it's not again i have to emphasize it's not because people are daft it's simply that they cannot see the environment they're operating in now, once you start mapping, and I know some people in the audience uh, will have done um, and have been doing for quite some time, and please be mindful of those who are uh, very new to our community, do, do help out where, where possible. Uh, once you start learning to map, you start to discover there are common sets of patterns. Uh, we call these climatic patterns. Uh, these are economic patterns, uh, doctrines, and principles of organization and leadership. Uh, so this is where we get into gameplay. And there's about, oh gosh, uh, 30 of the climatic patterns. Um, there's about uh, 40 of the doctrine. Uh, and there's uh, over 100 different forms of uh, gameplay as well. So I'll just go through a couple of climatic patterns just to show you. This is roughly compute in 2006. User needs an application, application built on some sort of best coding practice. Well, the application obviously was meeting some sort of need. So it really should say user has a need to an application. Um, applications built with best coding practice on a runtime coding environment on an operating system, best architectural practice for use of computers and products. That's roughly where we were. Um, and one of the first patterns you learn is everything evolves. The map isn't static. Um, so all of the components, if there is supply and demand competition, is moving from left to right. So if you take compute, we started off with a Z3 1943. By 2006, we had things like Amazon EC2, so much more utility compute. So the first pattern, everything evolves. The next pattern you learn is that past success breeds inertia. So if we've got really good in one space, we have inertia to the change. And you saw this with cloud in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to, well, even today, people with you know, large data centers and lots of physical servers had inertia to this change. The next pattern you learn is you get co-evolution of practice. So as things evolve, the practices of how we use that stuff changes. So, for example, as we moved into cloud, we got things like DevOps. We had best architectural practice for computers, a product very different from the computers of utility. The next pattern you learn is componentization. Efficiency enables innovation. As things become more of a commodity, it becomes quicker to build higher order systems. So think of it like this. Uh, it, it's faster to build a house with bricks than if you don't have bricks and don't have standard planks and don't have standard nails. And the, the next pattern we learn after that, uh, these higher order systems bring new sources of value and wealth. And those are powerful forces, that efficiency, that speed, new sources of value and worth, which is why you don't have a choice over these sorts of changes. Now, I used this in 2008. Um, so I originally started with a map when I was at Fatango. So that was with Steve and we were using it for our own business. And in 2008, I was working for a company called Canonical, who provides Ubuntu. So I was working with Damien and we um, we mapped out the space and uh, we could see the things going from compute to a utility. And we used the map to work out where should we invest and also where not to invest. So uh, what we did want to do was focus on you know, enterprise data centers, what we wanted to do was own these new spaces. We knew there'd be a new emerging practice, didn't know it was going to be called DevOps. That was Andy and Patrick's fault. Um, we knew there'd be new things building on top. We knew that uh, the future was utility compute. So that's what we did. Uh, we were two to three percent the operating system market against Microsoft and Red Hat. They were giants. Um, we had very little. Uh, we had about Oh, I think it was about half a million pounds, something like that, Damon. It was about half a million. It wasn't a lot of money. It's and five percent <laughs> of the Linux market, I think. <laughs> well, we, we, and, and we had well, in eighteen months, we went from two to three percent of the market to seventy percent of all cloud computing. Uh, and it was obviously because we were complete geniuses. No, not at all. I'm afraid um, it was bluntly 
output, we'd be using maps to compete in this space against people who couldn't see the environment. So 2004, I started off, you know, running for tango, having no idea, using a crystal ball, trying to pick out words that mattered by 2010, using maps to look at how to attack a space. Now, I sort of assumed everybody in the world knew how to do mapping. Um, I, and then subsequent conversations, I started to discover, you know, um, that, that people weren't aware how to map I, i'd made it creative commons from the very beginning uh, that's my open source nature and background so now i want to talk about a little bit about my research so in 2014 i started to look into this question of awareness and action so i i, I basically i i Ask lots of companies. Uh, these these companies, by the way, not representative sample of all companies, very much within the tech sector. And by looking at these companies, uh, I wanted to get an idea of um, you know how well they understood their environment and the, also their tendency towards action. In this case, the use of open open approaches, open source, open data. Now, the bubbles. The more the bigger the bubble the more companies in that particular area uh, of, of, uh, of this graph. Um, at the very top is where you've got very high levels of uh, awareness. The very bottom is where you've got very low. And what was noticeable is when looking at market cap changes, uh, the companies with high levels of awareness seem to have very positive market cap changes over, I think it was about seven years, whereas the companies at the bottom uh, regardless of whether they took action or not, uh, seem to have negative. So I, I sort of get this impression that, you know, awareness really did, did sort of matter. Um, but it wasn't uniform, as I said, these aren't representative. So in 2015, I was doing a piece of work looking through uh, China, China versus USA in comparison. And it, it was absolutely crystal clear that uh, the, the level of gameplay and the level of understanding of uh, landscapes and supply chains was vastly higher in China than anything that I was seeing in the West. Um, I love this particular quote by Jack Ma. Uh, eBay is a shark in the ocean. We are a crocodile in Yangtze River. If we fight in the ocean, we lose. And so we fight in the river. The understanding of landscape and how to compete in landscape, there would just seem to be much, much higher levels of awareness. So I started to mull over this whole process of evolution. So we start with early custom built examples. Um, we start obviously with the genesis, custom built examples, early products, maturing products, and eventually things become more of a utility. And as we as things evolve, it, they go through multiple waves of diffusion. So I've got A1, A2, A3. These are different instances. And you know, I, these are the diffusion curves. And every diffusion curve has a, has a chasm. And uh, a diffusion curves are simply uh, adoption over time. I was looking at this and what I realized is at any one point in time, you might get the majority on one diffusion curve and a minority on the next one. So if I look at this in terms of a map, a user say has a need for an application, best coding practice, runtime operating system, best architectural practice on compute. In 2006, we knew compute was going to a utility. The majority of people, say 2010, were on compute as a product. And it was a minority who were using computers as a utility. And so we had inertia to this change because of pre-existing capital. But more importantly, the majority felt the future was computers a product, which is why when you looked at CIO surveys, they would tell you the future was virtual data centers, private cloud, all this sort of stuff. And so I'm sitting there looking at the map and going, surely everybody understands the future is utility compute cloud. It's not building a private, but no, if you looked at the surveys, we're asking people, you know, CIOs running companies, they would have told you it was a virtual data centers. It was private cloud. Because that's where they were. They were on that, stuck in that world. And so, you know, you, you talk to people and say, you know, architectural practice is going to change. And 2010, we'd had the term DevOps had appeared. 
and you'd still get that same approach. Oh, it's just for startups. So it's only a small number of people are using it. Like cloud was just for, and you're looking at people going, you do know, you know, this stuff is going to evolve. You've got no choice. And these practices will appear. And of course, by 2014, then if you ask people about the future, about half of them are saying it's computers a product, about half of them are saying, oh, cloud, we now think cloud is the future. Great. Okay, good. And there's a bit of wobble going on around architectural practices. But at that point, the runtime had shifted. So we've gone from lamp.net to runtime is a utility with things like AWS Lambda and serverless. And so 2020, you know, you're seeing now people have accepted cloud. DevOps is sort of growing. There's lots of arguments about, you know, how well matured it is. Best architectural practice on compute as a product is heading towards niche. Um, the runtime, though, again, is the same problem. The majority are in this world of the runtime as a product. And it's a minority who's it's in this serverless world. But you can still, I'm looking at the map and everybody must surely know we've just been through this exercise in 2008 to 2010. Um, so surely we're not going to make the same mistake again, uh, particularly since it's only, you know, it's 2020. So it's very much within our uh, living memory. Um, so surely we all understand that the future is serverless and, and the practice is built on top of that. And no, you, you, you know, you're getting everybody talking about Kubernetes and containers and hybrid cloud. It's what is going on? You know, we should be exiting from all this DevOps and cloud. Uh, the computes as a product is a liability. We should be in serverless. We should be investing in FinOps, but we're not. And so I started to realize I kept on coming across this problem. If I, if I looked at surveys of what the future was, which were aggregated opinion from people, We'd often, I'd see people talk about DevOps, Kubernetes, hybrid, private. I'd look at the map and it was saying something completely different. So every 10 years, I do a population study. It's quite a big study. I look at changing characteristics. So by, you know, fortune 2020, 2021, I'm doing a population study. I thought I'd look into this question of awareness. And sure enough, um, what we found was there was a change of companies going on. Um, I won't go through all the characteristics because uh, yeah, all of this stuff is Creative Commons. You can find it online. Um, but when it came to awareness, traditional companies were very, awareness was seen as an executive function. Uh, whereas in this sort of next generation companies, and some of these are monsters, some of them are quite small. Um, it was more systemic throughout the organization. But what was also important was this idea of supply chain. So in traditional companies, they understood what we call one up, one down. We might have a bill of materials. We understand our vendors. We understand who our customers are. But in this sort of next generation, they were modeling. Um, so they understood in detail the supply chain. They understood their landscape. So I started to think, um, maybe there's something here. And I sort of assumed that this was just, as I always do, um, this was just, say, an IT problem. It's only in the tech industry. Other industries know what they're doing. So I set up research groups of finance, agriculture, healthcare, uh, 207 people in total, covering areas like defense. And so I, I picked one, defense, and we started off with the usual back in March, getting it, this group together and saying, what matters for the future of defense? And they would go things like, um, oh, social media, space command, drones, uh, end of armored divisions, rocket artillery, uh, digital sovereignty, lots of, lots of different terms. Okay. All right. But what really matters? Well, we got lots of different words and words very similar to what the analysts are saying. So we started grouping these words into common meanings. And then we started to map out all of these different spaces. So, um, you know, this caused an explosion of different maps. And all of this stuff, again, is all online. It's all freely available. You can go help yourself. Um, if I take one of these maps, and these maps are quite complex, so, you know, I'm not going to go through in detail. 
I've just highlighted three different areas. And this is a map looking at supply chains. Um, well, sorry, uh, uh, actually, um, this particular map is uh, look, well, it's looking at the overall uh, chain of defense. Now, what we have is uh, government needs a society, uh, government needs legitimacy in its rule. And there are many concepts involved, but one of them is this idea of sovereignty. And so we have more than one form of sovereignty. We have territorial sovereignty, economic, political, cultural, digital. All of these have a theater. So territorial sovereignty operates over land, sea, air, space, whereas economic sovereignty uh, operates over supply chains and, and oper operates over technologies, cyber. But if I look down and look at awareness, what we found is that things like land, territorial awareness, we are very good at. We have maps, we have radars, we have situational rooms. Um, but things like digital chain awareness, I know we're doing things with S-bombs. Um, and um, one of the speakers, by the way, is, uh, today is uh, the person behind S-bombs as well. Um, but digital chain awareness was quite poor. And supply chain awareness. We were stuck in this world of knowing one up, one down, and no more. So we started uh, with these groups looking into things that mattered. And these groups were coming up with, uh, well, in the case of defense, improving awareness, soft power, doctrine, and signals were the four things that actually mattered. Uh, we, you know, other things, they were important, but not as critical as those. And when we look at the analysts, the analysts were like our early list of words, and they were focused in a different direction. So I thought it was just one industry. Well, it turns out it's the same with agriculture, with healthcare, with finance. Uh, with all of them, in fact. So this is my hypothesis now. I think the majority of Western executive functions are operating in landscapes they do not understand. And we are relying on this concept of the market as a substitute for awareness. And I think this is becoming more and more evident and more clear today. We're getting problems in many different areas from uh, uh, from agriculture, from energy. I mean, the energy group uh, uh, who've mapped out the energy landscape. I mean, we're talking about critical things are changing the mix uh, in terms of renewables. Uh, we're talking about understanding awareness of the grid and the supply chain, understanding, um, you know, changing policy, uh, particularly planning rules to uh, allow for things like more micronuclear and micronuclear. If I look at the industry analyst, it's all about hydrogen. Okay, it's it, it's all it, it's focused on areas. You know, people talk about things like uh, micronuclear as though we're going to have one in every village. Well, except for the grid won't cope with that. Um, so I've now sort of come to the. This is my hypothesis, and this is what we're testing at the moment. And this is not. I specifically say Western um, because this is not uniform, as we noted with China. Now, a lot of people will tell me, oh, well, you know, you, you can't map um, the market. Um, well, that's just nonsense. Uh, this, is, this is a wonderful example uh, of graphing uh, the Hungarian economy using VAT records. Now, it's a graph, it's not a map. And there's 90,000 companies all interacting with each other. And what they've discovered is there's about uh, 32 companies, which any one of them has a problem that's 25% of the GDP of the country gone. Now, that's a pretty shocking uh, revelation. Um, there's no reason why we can't. We just haven't done the work. So now I want to talk about MapCan. I'm coming to the conclusion this issue of awareness is, is um, not just technology. It's cross government, it's cross finance, it's cross defense. And I think we are seeing this more and more clearly every single day. So with MapCamp, we want to give themes and explore different areas and, and different topics so beyond the sort of, you know, because I often talk technology and we, we want to go far beyond that. We wanted to go into areas like agriculture. I mean, uh, we have issues with supply chains in terms of our dependencies on synthetic fertilizers and the poor microbiological structure of soil. 
I mean, we think we're doing well. We're very good at profit extraction per hectare, not so necessarily so good at food extraction per hectare. And for that, we need different approaches, much more regenerative farming. So we decided to expand way beyond the sort of normal themes. And hopefully you'll find that out in the course of today in many of these talks. Now, I know we now need to disappear. Before we do, very, very last word. Let me stop sharing. Uh, we've also got Chris here as well. Chris? Yes. You've been, you've been helping out with the committee and everything else. Thank you so much. And, and you've been such a supporter of this over the years. I have to ask Chris, because uh, you also, what are you looking forward to for today? You know the answer, Simon, I'm looking for justice because a long time ago, one person told me it takes about seven years to learn worldly mapping. And if I'm wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm right, this is the seventh edition of MapCamp and I still yeah. don't feel like I finally learned it. So uh -oh. justice. Well, if you find that person, tell them off for me as well because I'm still learning and I've been doing <laughs> this for 17 years. So on that point, I'm going to say thank you to everyone. Enjoy yourself today. There are some truly fantastic speakers, uh, really interesting uh, topics. I, I will now let you all disappear uh, to go find your rooms. If you've got any problems, come and see us in the chat rooms in VFairs. I'll be hanging around all day. Um, and, and also uh, on Twitter, you can as usual, you can find me on Twitter. We're going to Twitter handle. Oh, what are we going to say? We're going to go map camp. So just hash map camp. And give us comments on there. Uh, we'll pick those up. Um, once the conference is over, JD, uh, uh, myself and Adam, we're, we're, we're going to do some slow watch parties. So, you, you, you know, we'll go back through the talks, invite the speakers and you're welcome uh, to come along for those. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Uh, see you at the end of the day.